Hey, welcome back Fingsters. Let's learn about the requests library. A Python requests module has several built-in methods to make HTTP requests to a specified URL using the get post put patch or head requests. Now, if you remember in one of our videos where we discussed how the web works, we learned that a HTTP request is meant to either retrieve data from a specified URL or to push data to a server. Thus, it works as a request response protocol between a client and a server. Now, without further delay, let us dive into some coding and start our journey with web scraping. Now, as I just mentioned, we need to make a request to get the content of the web page. In order to do this, all we have to do is import the library and then feed in the URL of the web page that we want to get. So let's have a look how we can do that. Before we can use the requests module or the requests library, we need to import it. So let's import our requests library. Requests is an external library. So you have to install it before you can use it. Since I'm using PyCharm, I can simply click on this icon and click on install the package request. Now by the time PyCharm installs the requests package, let us make a get request to the URL containing the web page from which we want to extract the contents. Let us make a get request to google.com. Therefore, let's create a variable and let's name it response. Then let's use the requests library and then we will be using the get method within the requests library. Now inside the get method, let us feed in the URL of the web page from which we want to extract some content. For this example, we are using google.com. So let's paste the URL and we are done with our get request. Now let us store the content received by the response variable in another variable called web page. To do that, we need our response variable and within the response variable, we will access the contents. So response.content. Now let us try and print response.content which is contained within the variable web page and let's check the content of HTML or the HTML content that was returned by the server when we sent the get request. That's it. Now let's try and execute our code. So right click and run requests. And as you can see, in the output window, we have a bunch of HTML codes. Just focus on the code that was returned or the HTML that was returned. So as you can see in the first part, it's written doc type HTML and then HTML, which suggests that this is the HTML code that was returned by Google when we requested using the get method. So that's how we can fetch the HTML of a web page using the get method of the requests library. Now, if you remember, we also discussed about headers that are attached by the server while sending response to the client. If I remember, we discussed that in the video where we learned how the web works. So let us try and extract the header information from the response. In order to do that, all we need to do is extract the header from the response using response.headers. So what do I mean? Let us try and execute that in our code and let's check what's the output. So we have our response and we want to extract the headers from our response. So that's it. Now let's execute our code. And as you can see, this is a dictionary containing the information returned by the server to the client. I mean the header information returned by the server to the client. Now, in order to make things more readable, let us use a for loop and arrange the header key and value pairs properly. So 
I hope you know how to arrange or how to loop through the key value pairs in a dictionary. So in order to do that, we need to use a for loop and we need to iterate over response.headers and items. Now let's print our key and then let's provide a little space or maybe a colon and then let's print the value. Okay, we are good to go. Let me comment out this line. Okay, now let's have a look. Yeah, that looks far better. If you see, we have the response header information listed for us. Now this brings us to a very important topic, user agents. Now in computing, a user agent is a software that is acting on behalf of a user, such as a web browser that retrieves and facilitates end user interaction with the web content. For a browser, the user agent is a string that helps the server to identify which browser is being used at the client end, what version and which operating system is the client using. So all these information are given by the user agent to the server. So let us try and have a look at how we can view the user agent while requesting a web page from the server. You'll find the user agent info in the request header. So let's print response dot request dot headers. Let me comment this out for the sake of better readability. Okay, now let's execute our code. And as you can see, we have a dictionary which contains the name of the user agent for us, which happens to be Python requests 2.24.0. So as soon as we send a request to the server, it understands that some user or some user agent is trying to send or is trying to request information from my web page. Now, when we send information to certain servers, they might think that we are an automated service or a bot and then it might block us. A very good example of such a server would be Amazon. Let us try and visualize that with the help of an example. So let us try and extract information from this URL or I should say let us try and send a GET request to this URL. So instead of google.com, let us use the other URL. And now let's try to execute this code. Now this does not make things quite clear. So let's have a look at the status code. If you remember, when the status code is 200, that means the request was successfully processed. Just to give you an example, let us use our previous example where we tried to send a GET request to google.com and now let's print the status code. In order to do that, you need to type response.status code and let's check. And as you can see, the status code for us in this case is 200. This means that the request was successfully processed. Now let's use the Amazon URL and now let's check the status code. As you can see, we have a 503 error, which indicates a service unavailable error. So this means we did not receive a response from the server. Now there's a very simple workaround to overcome this issue. The requests library provides us with the facility to change the user agent in the request header. Therefore, let's define our own user agent. To do that, we need to create a simple dictionary and assign our user agent. Now you might be asking me what user agent should I feed in? So I'll help you with an example. Move on to your web browser and search what is my user agent and there you go this is the user agent for your browser so copy this 
and now let's define a variable let me name it headers and headers is going to be a simple dictionary where I'm going to key in user agent with a value that I just copied. So now I have successfully created my own user agent. Now I need to place this properly so that I can use it. And now within the requests.get function, we need to feed in this user agent. So let's do that. We need to use headers equals headers which is the variable that we just created and that should be good enough for us to yield the output that we need now let's execute this code and as you can see we now have 200 as the status code which means that we received a proper response from the server now there are many more factors governing the user agent. So even though you might change the user agent, you may still be blocked by the server because it might still think that you are a bot or an automated system and it will block you. So those depend on numerous other factors which we will be covering later on in this course. However, a simple solution in this case could be to rotate your user agent after a certain interval of time. Now there's a website known as whatismybrowser.com where you will get a list of user agents. You can simply download them in your system and then use them accordingly. So that was it for this video. If you have time, please join me in the next video where we are finally going to dive into the beautiful soup library and use it to scrape content from the web page.